So the first film we'll be talking about today is called Judy. 30 years after starring in The Wizard of Oz, beloved actress and singer Judy Garland arrives in London to perform sold-out shows at the Talk of the Town nightclub. While there, she reminisces with friends and fans and begins a whirlwind romance with musician Mickey Deans, her soon-to-be fifth husband. So we've kind of talked about this already, the fact that neither of us knew much about Judy Garland beyond Wizard of Oz, which I imagine a lot of younger people would be the same. Yeah, I think when the new A Star Is Born came out, I then Googled it because my mum then said, oh, it's like remakes of previous ones. And I think she's in, is it like the first or second A Star Is Born? So I knew that she was in that, but I'd never seen it or anything else that she was in. That's it. I only knew that she was in The Wizard of Oz. And yeah, I think that's completely fine to know because she's not someone... That's the thing with biopics. I think it brings someone from the past really back into the limelight and the spotlight because she's never been forgotten. Mm. It was just... She wasn't kind of head of all everything. Yeah, she she's iconic in a similar way to Audrey Hepburn and Catherine Hepburn and all these other Definitely. Marilyn Monroe and all these other classic film stars. But it hers is more a singular reason. It's that one film. Whereas Audrey Hepburn, you think about this great catalogue she had, same with Catherine Hepburn and Marilyn Monroe, she kind of transcends the film industry as more of like a, a fashion icon and obviously other stuff in her personal life whereas Judy yeah when I hear the name I just see Dorothy yeah but this film I'm so glad has brought so much more to that and you get to see what happens to that kind of young star what can happen to that kind of young star once you know Hollywood's done with them yeah I thought it was really interesting so it opens and we see a young Judy being spoken to by whether it's the director or the owner of the studio who's doing the Wizard of Oz and she's being told kind of like this is the contract like we've chosen you out of all these people you are Dorothy and it's really interesting to see this kind of she seems so young and innocent she doesn't want to let them down but at the same time she's not sure she doesn't know what she wants and then we kind of switch into what the present of the film which is kind of the 1960s when she's in London well not in London yet but um, she's with her kids and not doing great, is running out of money. And then to make some money to be able to be with her kids, she is offered five-week concert stint. <laughs> is yeah. that the right yeah. word? In London. And that was kind of one of the last things that she did before she sadly passed away. And it was really interesting to see, I've written that in my notes, I love this kind of mirror image between seeing the past and the Wizard of Oz days and things like that compared to the present in the film and how there wasn't really any change and how being thrown into this Hollywood and glamorous and star industry from such a young age really and truly affected her, which is so, so sad. Yeah, you can see the root of most of her problems from being involved in that Hollywood studio world where her life was so tightly controlled and she just had so much trauma from from that and it bounces back and forth between the two and you you understand why she's so troubled. Yeah, I saw this, I think it might have been National Mental Health Awareness Mm. Day or something and I think both of these films actually really go into the depths of mental health and how things can affect people and things get to people and this really made me upset to see how things that had happened to her as a young person going into this industry yeah were still with her and still affecting her and it it was just so sad like kind of the food and the sleeping pills and stuff she couldn't get through the day like in the present without all of that and that was because it began when she was so young and it's just crazy to think that her whole life may have been so completely different if she hadn't have had that role or if things were different and like health and safety and stuff. It's just so interesting to see this and also so heartbreaking to know that it is real and to know that so many other celebrities had gone through it and that caused so much pain and troubled lives for a lot of people that, yeah, we look up to nowadays and are now icons. I think one of the things we're seeing through a lot of these musical biopics is you have these incredible artists who are corrupted by the industries that they have to go into to produce their art and a lot of the times as with this film it's managers who can send artists off the rails and in this film we have kind of two of those figures we have the studio head who is really manipulating her and using her as a business pawn to make money and abusing her in as is hinted in in a number of ways and then also the manager that comes into her life as you mentioned in the synopsis who kind of woos her and then you get the sense that he's just trying to get make a cheap buck off her, really. I, I wanted to go quickly back to the opening scene 
because that really I think set an interesting tone for what we've kind of been talking about and you really get the sense that he's trying to sell her on this dream and they're walking down the yellow brick road and he's saying well would you rather be a movie star or a housewife and he really sells it to her and I don't know I just I wish for someone as talented as Judy that she could have I don't know had her talent nurtured in a different way yeah it's really crazy to see like how things work then and how things work now obviously I'm not directly in the industry to know what it would be like for an actress slash singer to be going into it but from what we kind of see and learn about now people kind of go into themselves and get discovered in different ways and are able to be nurtured and there's so much more knowledge about mental health and feminism and you don't have to be a housewife so I feel compared to now it was it was literally do this or your life ends there was kind of no other option and the fact that yeah it was this perfect little thing that she was walking down the yellow brick road whilst it was being spoken to it was like this is your dream Judy you've got to do it yeah. like th- there was literally no other option for you yeah you're under our thumb or you're a nobody was basically what you were saying yeah which, yeah, which was such a shame but no to think positively now because yeah. obviously we've spoken about the kind of sad depths and obviously it would be cool to go back into that in a a bit but I just want to say how lovely the film was and I felt so hooked by it and it wasn't because of it wasn't like action and drama and crazy things it was more I was just mesmerized by how fantastic it was it was really stunning everything so the costumes wow I want to I was going to ask you about the costumes (laughs) because there's actually one scene where the Judy asked the manager should I wear this and He's like, no, you look like a grandmother. But I thought all our outfits were incredible. Yeah, I thought they were so cool. And like the sequined outfits. And I was just so excited. I love biopics and stuff because like with Rocket Man, how we see the pictures at the end, the costume is made for the film compared to the actual ones and just the work that goes into it. So the fact that someone has gone through what Judy wore throughout all these kind of five weeks at the talk of the town and kind of recreated them and remade them and really looked at the uh, the dates and the fashion then and brought it back to life. It is amazing. I love, I love when people put so much into this and you can truly see that through like the costumes that everyone wears. Mm. Even what the men wear, you can, you can see it isn't from a modern day suit. You can see it's from then. And I think that's so cool. And as well, like the sets and the theater, it is all this kind of just this grand, fantastic art piece. It is beautiful. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. And you, yeah, you really appreciate that. And this really takes you back to sixties London. And there's a great shot when she's kind of going down like a high street in London or something, and you see all these different outfits from the sixties. And yeah, it made me made me smile. So. It's so cool. So we can't talk about Judy without talking about the goddess Renee Zellweger who plays Judy. Wow. We know that she can act, Bridget Jones and everything else she's been in. We know she can sing from being in Chicago. So to see her really create this fantastic Judy, oh my gosh. I was, just the trailer, I was like, I cannot wait to see this. She is utterly fantastic. Her passion for this role was off the charts and you can truly see that through every movement and stuff that she really looked into Judy in the last kind of few years of her life and what she was like. It was phenomenal. We were talking about how we didn't really go into this film with much knowledge of Judy. So it's quite incredible to see, you can tell without even knowing anything about Judy, that she's immersed herself fully in this character and, as you said, got every little mannerism. And I think that especially came through when she's performing and maybe she's not like this graceful young Dorothy that she used to be, but she's very expressive with her arms and maybe there's some trauma in there as well, but it's, I don't know, it's very immersive and and true yeah she's yeah created this character who still has a stage presence can still wow an audience i thought she was fantastic and kind of i want to again talk about this with the joker later but the transformation that she's gone through to become this judy it was really quite scary when we saw her arms and her legs and could see how the drugs and things can uh, really affect someone i really have so much kind of admiration for actors who fully go through these amazing and vigorous transformations to become these characters. She yeah. she's amazing. Yeah, it's re- it's remarkable because as is the joke in Bridget Jones, she's supposed to be. I think the word is chunky, which maybe by Hollywood standards, chunky. Yeah. I mean that just means you know anyone who's not a normal weight. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, to see her this uh, skinny, I guess and. And I think that ages her a bit as well. And you can see it in her face. And as we'll say with the Joker, yeah, you've got to admire an actor who really takes on that physical transformation, embraces it. 
yeah, you could really see how troubled and fragile Judy was through this transformation. It was really, it was really sad. Another character I want to talk about is played by Jessie Buckley, and she is kind of the person who takes charge of Judy when she goes to London. We love Jessie Buckley in the film Wild Rose, and I didn't know she was going to be in this, so suddenly she was on my screen and I was like, uh, hello? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a really nice surprise. I think she's fantastic, and someone who... I don't know, I feel has really broken out this year in the parts that she's been in. And again, to be able to go from something like Wild Rose, it's very modern, to then something that's a lot older and real as well, a real kind of person, you can really see her talent in it. And yeah, I, I really love and admire her. And, yeah, uh, and I thought I had... see her in it. I thought her character was quite interesting as well because she's tasked with looking after Judy while she's in London, but shes you never get the sense that she's trying to become chummy with her or best pals with her. She's very professional with it. And I think it's a really interesting contrast with the manager who comes in and woos Judy and maybe blinds her with compliments, whereas Jessie Buckley's character is just very straightforward with her. And I think through that straightforwardness actually comes genuine care by the end of the film and I think Judy appreciates and recognises that you know this was someone who was genuinely looking out for me. Yeah it was really interesting to see kind of the professional kind of person that she was and it was very you're needed on stage get on stage like I literally don't care like get this dress on yeah. you're fine let's go to then suddenly start to see that actually Judy is this quite troubled person who does just need a little bit extra love and care she will give a show. It was really nice to see that change in her to break down this wall and not not yeah become super pally but become someone that Judy trusts and mm. wants to work with yeah one thing that I wanted to touch on was the two gay men who Judy becomes best friends with well not best friends but <laughs> <laughs> suddenly become kind of yeah really good she, pals with she finds refuge in them as well I think she's having a hard time and the scene that they pop up in it reminds me of the Churchill film that came out last year with Gary Oldman in and there's a scene in it where Churchill goes on the London Underground and he gives this rousing speech and everyone's like woo woo and this kind of really reminded me of that where I'm not sure if this actually happened in real life my guess is no maybe it did but it's just a nice fictional scene that maybe speaks to the way she was more generally in real life, you know, being friends with the gay yeah, community. With everyone, mm. yeah. And yeah, people who have just been genuinely mistreated or downtrodden, she could relate to them. Yeah. Well, the thing is, if you are gay, it was you were called a friend of Dorothy. I've got that written oh, down as well. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I thought it was really interesting to see this the same sex prejudices that people went through, the hard times that people faced. And I thought it was fantastic to show it because I think a lot of films not would try to hide it, but would um, possibly just have small undertones mm. and stuff but the fact they fully went into it and explored it was so nice but what made me kind of really not worried but a bit ah was the fact that this still happens in a lot of countries around the world where people are arrested and and killed for loving who they love and it's such a shame so lovely that this was able to be approached and shown on screen the way it was it truly was beautiful and the fact that they got to see judy live was when they thought they wouldn't was so like it just filled my heart with so much joy but yeah such a shame that things like this still happen but important to mention it and, and yeah, touch on it. Anna, any closing thoughts before we head on to this huge film in The Joker? Uh, yeah, I thought that this was just a lovely film, like I said. It, it was really fantastic, and I love biopics so much. So it was really lovely to see this one about someone who we don't really know about, and lovely to see that her being in London and this kind of final few months of her life where she would give everything just to receive a little bit of love back. And I think that's what I want to end on, is that the idea that we all deserve love, and it can be difficult to receive that. Like, we heard that she was suffering with depression, and she was on husband number five, and she just wanted to be with her kids, and she felt so kind of low and alone. And at the same time, it didn't stop her giving love. So mm -hmm. to the, the two men that she became friends with, and to everyone around her, she was always, always giving out so much love because I think that's just what she wanted back, because she never had it. And I think, yeah, I just want to end on that, that I think that this film was really all full of love for Judy, for what she stood for, for who she was. And, yeah, I hope that she continues to be remembered um, as someone who was so loving and caring and so talented and truly deserves the love that we kind of all have for her. I think that's a really beautiful note to end on. And I think that's really also mirrored in the in the ending with the kind of I'm Spartacus ending where everyone gets up and yeah. and sings with her and kind of gives her that love back and that emotion back that she puts into the song at the end. So 
Yeah, yeah I think do, you, do you have any final thoughts or no, I, 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 I don't think I can put anything <laughs> as that. coherent or as beautiful as that, so I think we'll end there.